Am I the asshole for not changing my wedding date? My husband, 23 male, and I, 22 female. My husband, 20... I don't know. Sometimes you guys usually don't respond, so I'm like, I'll just get into it because it's not enough information. <laughs> but that pause was just long enough. That I'm like, <laughs> and she just launched it. <laughs> I will say, though, I wasn't looking at you, so it's not like I did it on purpose, but I'm sure it probably felt the same, so I'm sorry about that. My husband, 23 male, and I, 22 female, got engaged before Easter in March 2024. We dated since the end of November 2022 after meeting online just one stay over. Since August of 2023, we knew we wanted to get married and even talked about eloping, but knew how important our wedding was to both my family and his. I had told almost everyone who asked me that we would have a short engagement and we were already planning on getting married by the end of May 2024. A few days after we got engaged, the date was set for the third weekend of May. We had been looking forward to being married before the summer and had talked about it since August, but my now husband works with cattle and does farming. If you know anything about farming, harvest is a big, big deal that he cannot miss and take off for a week because of how many hours it takes. Mm -hmm. My childhood friend, now ex-friend, 23 female, sent me seven text messages within 30 seconds saying she was frustrated. She couldn't be there because of the trip she had planned before, that she was freaking out and asked if there was any other available dates because of how frantic her texts were. I called her and the first thing she said was, you're really screwing me over. Can you not do another date? I explained to her after 10 minutes of hearing her ex explain the trip was for her mentor slash boss's graduation ceremony in another state since he was doing seminary online that the date could not be moved. We decided this date would be the best because my fiance's sister and sister-in-law are wedding photographers and the weekend we chose was the only weekend they had available on such short notice given that they are usually booked for weddings six months to a year out from the weddings they were doing. It was important to both my fiance and myself that his family was there. And when I explained that to her, she said, I just think if they're your family and it's important for them to be there, then they should be able to move their work schedule around for the wedding. <laughs> I explained again that I was not sure that was possible because they're wedding photographers who already had these dates booked. I offered to pay for her plane ticket if it was an issue of money, to which she brushed over and ignored, and she told me she already paid for it and couldn't get it refunded back. Side note, I later found out that she hadn't even paid for the plane ticket. Her boss slash mentor did. While on the phone, I reassured her that I wanted her to be there, but I understood if she couldn't make it, and I asked if there was anything I could do to help the situation, and she replied, move the date. I explained everything to her once again while she told me, I'm your best friend, and this is your wedding. I just think if his family wants to be there, then they should move their work schedule around. The weekend before would work better for me. I said to her then, my fiance and I understand not everyone can be there, but if my fiance's family can only make one weekend work before the end of May, that's the weekend we're going to go with. We're not expecting everyone to be able to go, and we understand with such a short engagement, not everyone would be able to come. While it is a wedding in the same town for all of my friends and family, I want to make sure my fiance's family is there since it's an out-of-state wedding for them. She then said, yes, but I'm your best friend. Am I not supposed to come to your wedding? Am I just not supposed to go on this trip? You have screwed me over in this situation. You're my best friend and have been since birth. I would move mountains for you and I can't believe you would do something like this to me. I've been dreaming of this day since I was born and this is the most important day for you. Side note, our moms were best friends in high school, so we have known each other our whole lives. And then there's a little update. Update. She eventually did cancel her trip and make it to the rehearsal, rehearsal dinner, bachelorette party, and wedding, but made a comment to me during rehearsal about how upset she was she was at the back of the line of the bridesmaids and wished she was at the graduation ceremony that night. Am I the asshole for not moving my wedding date? Not the asshole. If she can still make it to the wedding, great. If not, oh well. She sounds exhausting and childlike. And then Opie responded, This was not even the entire story, just the beginning of it. I left out the part where she tried to take over my bachelorette party that my sisters and cousins were in charge of, while also asking me to move the date for that party as well. She did make a comment to me the day before my wedding about how she wished she was at her boss's graduation. Update, I added this portion to the original post. Am I the asshole for calling my cousin and her daughter illegitimate? 
Is yep. this from r slash comfort level pod? This is from r slash comfort level pod. I read this oh. one. I, 24 female, just bought a house. I'm super excited and I wanted to celebrate by having a backyard barbecue. I invited all of my friends and my entire family. I also invited my boyfriend, 25 male, since he hasn't met my extended family yet. We've only been dating for about three months. It's the day of the party. Everything is great. My boyfriend is meeting my cousins, aunts, uncles, and everybody in between. I finally take him over to my cousin of my dad's side of the family, 40s male, who is a pastor. Him, his wife, his five children, and granddaughter were there as well. For context, his oldest daughter, we'll call her Maple, has a different mom from the rest of the siblings because pastor had her with one of his past girlfriends when he was young. His granddaughter belongs to Maple, and Maple wasn't married when she had her baby either. Back to the story. I introduced my boyfriend to the group, and we're all chatting with each other. For some reason, my pastor cousin feels the need to say, Well, I hope you two aren't having sex before marriage. Having children out of wedlock would be a sin. He said it in front of everybody. My whole family got quiet. He then went on to talk about how I needed to keep my legs closed or my boyfriend would never marry me because I would already be putting out. It was extremely awkward. It, of course, caught my boyfriend off guard. So I say, well, were you thinking about that when you had your illegitimate daughter? You obviously didn't share those ideals with her either because now you have an illegitimate granddaughter. I had no intention of embarrassing his children because I love them and we're friends. I was just so angry at this grown man making an attempt to try and shame me for doing something he doesn't know if I'm doing or not in front of everybody I know. He was pretty pissed, and before he could say anything else, I said, I'm bored of this conversation, and I went into the house. My uncle, in drunk fashion, died laughing, (laughs) adding insults to injury, I guess. My cousin and his family left shortly after these words were exchanged. My mom found me in the house after walking them out and asked if I was okay. She reminded me that we know my cousin has always been holier than thou and feels the need to show out in front of an audience. She also apologized to my boyfriend and promised that our entire family isn't like that and that what we do as adults is solely our business. Mm. She did, however, think that I should be the bigger person and apologize to my cousin. She said that he was really hurt and embarrassed. He was obviously projecting because he's ashamed of his past. I told her I'd think about it and try to spend the rest of the night having a good time. Mm -hmm. Later in the week, I called Maple and I asked her if I could come over to talk. I went over to her house and told her that I wanted to apologize to her specifically. I don't look at her or her daughter differently from being born out of wedlock. I frankly don't care how they were conceived. I was just mad at her dad for talking about my my rooter and my fooder and wanted to make a good point. <laughs> <laughs> she let me know that she wasn't mad at me and that she knows how her dad is. I never intended on dragging her name or her daughter's name through the mud, and I went a little far. Maple said it felt good to see somebody put her dad in his place. Mm. We went out for margaritas, business as usual, and our relationship has been thriving and surviving since. In the end, I still feel like the only person who deserved the apology was Maple. She had nothing to do with the conversation, yet her name was mentioned. My dad is proud of me for standing up for myself, but my mom is still telling me that I should apologize to Pastor, especially since we have a family reunion coming up in August. I don't want to apologize to him, and I don't care about it being awkward during the family reunion. He has no right to ask me about my sex life and attempts to, I don't know, intimidate my boyfriend, guilt us. Everyone, thanks for all the kindness. Just a few things to clear up. My mom is not in defense of my cousin. She wasn't She hasn't once made me feel like I did anything wrong. There's been a lot of drama in my family as of late, and because she herself isn't a messy person, people have been bringing their problems to her. I think she's just overwhelmed and figured this would be two less people who are fighting. I reassured her that there will be no fighting on my end. He has been posting subliminal messages on Facebook, but honestly, everyone just ignores him. And for all the people saying the story is fake or clickbait, have obviously never come from a religious family. For the most part, my family is normal and accepting. However, we do have a few extremists. Those people typically aren't invited to anything. I originally just invited Maple, her siblings, and her stepmom, but of course, Pastor tagged along. The pastor has always been a little aggressive and said outlandish things for attention. My family doesn't talk about it, but Pastor struggled with drug usage back in the day. My dad said that changed him and he used to not be so crass. My ex broke up with me the morning after our three-year anniversary. 
So my ex and I were together for about three years and we just recently broke up. I just want to say that I've always known I wanted to be a young mom and so has he from the get-go. It's one of those conversations that we had like first date. This man was a complete mama's boy. I mean, I'm just saying this because I just think it's interesting and everybody, I hear a lot of people talk about like how it's a red flag when moms are really obsessed with their adult sons. We fought a lot because I guess his mom didn't really like me, but it was never like something that would make us like think about actually breaking up. We had just come back from a trip. Everything went amazing on the trip, I thought, but apparently no, because the morning after we had just come back from vacation, he sits down at breakfast and he very coldly says, I think we should break up. Well, I thought he was joking. So I, <laughs> I literally said, not funny, because I thought it was a joke. Now looking back, how embarrassing, how embarrassing that like my boyfriend is trying to break up with me and I thought it was a joke. So then I see that he starts getting really, like, really serious and he tries to explain himself. He's like, I've been lying to you for these past three years. Um, I never wanted to have kids with you. And so that's when it really hit me because he knows it was my biggest dream to be a mom. He said he never said anything because he knew that in the beginning, if he had told me that he didn't want to be a father, then I wouldn't have dated him in the first place. And that's true. I wouldn't have because... Who in their right mind is going to waste someone's time like that? But now he's too guilty and thinks that I should move on. So that's why he's breaking up now after three years. I was devastated. I started crying. I could barely even argue because I was done. Couldn't stop crying and um, left the house and immediately called the landlord and put in the 30 day notice. I pack, I clean, I do everything. He doesn't move a finger. He, he only remembers that he has <laughs> to actually pack to move the day before we have to get out of the house. The fridge was his and I had bought a whole gallon of milk and there was a chicken in the fridge. And then I thought, well, this is going to be the perfect petty revenge. I didn't say anything when the moving company was wrapping up his fridge because he was going to live with his parents. So I knew that they were going to put the fridge in his dad's warehouse and the ungodly smell that would come from there. And nobody from his family, including his mom, who hated me, would be so confused. Like, what this? what is this ungodly smell? So yeah, that's what I did. I mean, not the biggest revenge, but... It